In the first seven minutes on ABC 17 News at 5, MU professor Melissa Click is defending her actions tonight after a new video shows her in another confrontation. We're talking to Dr. Click about the incident tonight to see if her original story about her involvement in the incident is still at odds and still adds up. Plus, the man charged in connection to a highway patrol trooper's death is now asking for a bond reduction. We'll tell you why the suspect's attorney says the request is justified. And a warming trend begins tomorrow. I'll show you the warmest day of the week and how long this warmer weather will stick around and if there's any rain in the weekend forecast. All those details coming up in the first seven minutes. ABC 17 News at 5 on KMIZ starts now. Tonight, Melissa Click is speaking out to ABC 17 News again, this time after police body camera video emerges showing her cussing and yelling at police. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joey Parker. Tonight, ABC 17's Marissa Hollowett and Dan Messinio are talking to stakeholders in the instance. We start with ABC 17 News anchor Marissa Hollowett tonight, who met with Melissa Click herself this afternoon. And Marissa, has Click's tone changed since your last conversation? Joey, not so much. She says she's still going to fight for her job and still insists her main objective was protecting students. Now, this is the video that I talked to her about today. She's seen yelling at officers and saying, quote, get your effing hands off of me, end quote. But she actually used the F word in that video. Click tells me she's sorry for using that word, but not exactly for what she did. I think um, that folks maybe don't see a lot of protests in this part of the state, I'm not really sure, but I think that uh, what was seen in, in that video is pretty typical for a protest. The officer was shaking a can of pepper spray, in my opinion, preparing to use it on the students, and was pushing them. I also asked Click if the Concerned Student 1950 protests and movement were initiated by faculty. See her response coming up on ABC 17 News at 6. Marissa, we're looking forward to that. Thank you. We're also hearing from the MU Faculty Council tonight about the latest video that shows Melissa Click clashing with police. ABC 17's Dan Messinio joins us live on the MU campus with those details. And Dan, the chair of the Faculty Council, says there are laws, bylaws really, that deal with the professor's conduct. There are, Joey, and the chair of the faculty council says that these bylaws were approved by the curators and they were designed for situations just like this one with Click. Now, curator David Steelman told me this latest video of Click is further proof that the curator's suspension of her was the right move and that he's been disappointed with how the faculty has handled the incident with Click. But today, the chair of the MU Faculty Council, Ben Trachtenberg, says the suspension is unusual and it isn't in line with university procedures. I think it's important to separate any one person's opinion about her employment status and the processes that the university has promised to use. Whatever you think about whether Melissa Click should work here or what the university should do, she's entitled to the procedures that any faculty member ought to get. And if those procedures are followed, then we'll see what happens. Part of the curator's suspension of CLICK includes an investigation. At this point, the curators and the faculty council are waiting for those results. Reporting live on MU Campus, Dan Messinio, ABC 17 News. Dan, thank you. And the investigation into CLICK was finished on Friday. Curator Steelman says he expects the results coming in soon. It's unclear, though, tonight if the newest video will trigger another investigation. The last of three forums featuring candidates up for a new University of Missouri position has now wrapped up. The candidates are vying for the Chief Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer position for the UM system. Today, the forum featured Dr. G. Christine Taylor. She served as the inaugural Vice Provost for Diversity and Inclusion at Purdue University. And while at Purdue, Taylor built the Division for Diversity and Inclusion. The forums for the other two candidates were held last week. Well, we have some pretty nice weather on the way. It's going to feel like spring here by the time Friday rolls around. Here are the forecast headlines. And yes, I am tracking some warming temperatures for the next few days. With that warmer air, though, it is going to become rather windy both Thursday and Friday as temperatures climb. And there is a chance of rain this weekend, but not for all of mid-Missouri. We'll be covering which areas and how much. Right now, the temperatures have climbed from this morning's cold 30s to near 40 right now in Moberly. 41 at Columbia, and it's 40 
43 at the lake. So we did end up warming up this afternoon despite the cloud cover, and those clouds are going to stick around tonight. Here's your overnight forecast. And with that light northwest breeze and mostly cloudy skies tonight, temperatures only dropped to near 30 by morning. We'll see lows in the upper 20s to near 30. As you head out the door in the morning, there's no concern on the roadways. It looks like we'll be dry overnight. We'll just have a lot of clouds around the area. You can see those clouds on our satellite and radar, and they're going to stick around into the early part of the day tomorrow. The clearing out to the west here, the drier air, will finally start to work its way in tomorrow afternoon. So here are the forecast low temperatures for tonight, dipping into the upper 20s to near 30 by the time morning rolls around with mostly cloudy skies tonight. You can see those clouds on future track here at 10 o'clock tonight. And as we head into the daybreak hours tomorrow, uh, daybreak hour tomorrow, we see the clouds are still here for the morning commute. It's going to be rather gloomy out there. But as we head into the afternoon, some drier air will start to work its way in. And we'll start to see some sunshine tomorrow as temperatures climb to near 50 in Columbia. Yeah, well, it'll be above average tomorrow. 52 in Jefferson City for your Wednesday. Not bad for the middle of the week, huh? We'll finally see a little sun. Temperatures start to warm. We'll have a light east-southeast wind up to 10 miles an hour. 53 at Versailles and 54 at the Lake of the Ozarks tomorrow. Well, the weekend is still looking nice. We even bumped up Sunday a little bit to 61. The warmer day looks to be sun, uh, Saturday with 65 degrees. The Lake of the Ozarks touching 70 Saturday. Sunday, though, a little bit cooler, and there is a slight chance of rain. That's mainly south of Interstate 70. I'll show you that coming up in my next full forecast. Plus, my next weather, I'm going to break down those weekend temperatures even more for you, so stay tuned for that. There is the seven-day forecast. One thing you might notice is Friday's the warmest day, and then next week by Monday and Tuesday, we start cooling down. I'll let you know how long this above-average weather will last with the 14-day outlook coming up. Thank you, Sharon. A man charged in connection to a highway patrol trooper's death is now asking for a bond reduction. 20-year-old Sergey Comerzon is charged with involuntary manslaughter and the death of 25-year-old trooper James Bava. Comerzon's attorney requested to lower the $250,000 cash-only bond today. Comerzon's attorney says evidence shows that when Bava turned on his lights and siren, Comerzon wasn't even in sight. The motion also says Bova chose to look for the motorcyclist and drove fast to catch up with him. It it says that decision posed potential risk to the trooper and others. We now know the name of the victim of a house fire near Camdenton. 68-year-old Marilyn Asti of Camdenton was pronounced dead Saturday. The fire tore through the home on Willow Creek Road Friday afternoon. Fire marshals say they can't determine the exact cause of the fire due to the significant amount of structural damage to the building. Three men wanted in connection to crimes in Columbia are now in the Boone County Jail. Authorities with the Boone County Sheriff's Department confirmed officials in Georgia caught Earl Moses, Sylvester Williams, and Devontae Hayes. All three are suspects in Columbia crimes and were taken back to Boone County yesterday. Hayes is charged in connection to an armed robbery, an attempted robbery, and shooting in central Columbia that happened back in October. Williams and Moses are suspects in an armed home invasion that happened off of Brown Station Road in July, and Moses is also a suspect in an armed robbery on Agate Way that happened last September. The mother of Michael Brown will soon testify in favor of a bill. A proposed bill will have details on what the measure calls for. A group of Missouri Muslims rallied at the Capitol tonight. I'll tell you what they rallied for and who they're supporting. You're watching ABC 17 News at 5 on KMIZ, where the news comes first. A group of Missouri Muslims is calling on legislators to address what they call a growing sense of Islamophobia. The St. Louis chapter on the Council on American Islamic Relations rallied at the Capitol today. ABC 17's Deborah Kendrick was at that rally and joins us live from the Capitol in Jefferson City. And Deborah, hundreds of supporters showed up. That's right, hundreds of people showed up today at the Capitol, not only wanting state legislators to go ahead and address the issue of what they call Islamophobia, but they also wanted to address the issue of allowing Syrian refugees into Missouri. said, what makes America great? Standing, 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 standing. 
Hundreds of Missouri Muslims rallied today at the Capitol in support of Syrian refugees and against Islamophobia. Within this country are now saying things such as we want to ban Muslims from this country, we want Muslims to wear special ID. You know, this hurts our community and actually it hurts all religious communities within this state country as well because this is a nation built on religious freedom. The group fears that not only is this affecting just Muslim communities, but could later affect other communities as well. Because if you can say that about Muslims today, what's stopping you from saying that about Jewish people tomorrow or Hindus or Sikhs or atheists the next day? Some lawmakers are for bringing in refugees, but others believe that perhaps a temporary hold is a better solution until we get a better handle on our vetting process. However, the organization doesn't agree. First of all, you know, how would you know who somebody is Muslim or not Muslim? So we'll start having to do something terrible with our religious litmus test on people, asking them, what's your religion, what do you believe in? And also just this notion that Muslims might not be safe just because they have the wrong religion. I believe that's dangerous. <clears throat> The executive director told me today that they are very happy with the outcome so far legislators have made and they're very happy they were able to listen to their concerns. Now, Governor Nixon hasn't officially taken a stance on whether he will allow Syrian refugees to come in or not, but legally he did say to the organization that he can't really stop them if they did decide to want to come in. Live in Jefferson City, I'm Deborah Kendrick for ABC 17 News. And the Council on American-Islamic Relations brands itself as the nation's largest Muslim civil liberties and advocacy group that promotes justice and understanding of Islam. A new bill may require some Missouri law enforcement agencies to wear body cameras while on duty and in uniform. The bill applies to police forces in cities with more than 100,000 residents. Now, if it passes, the Missouri Department of Public Safety would have to pay for the equipment. The mother of Michael Brown is set to testify tomorrow morning in favor of the bill. In a terror watch tonight, the Islamic State group is reportedly having trouble meeting expenses due to a shortage of cash. The group has cut salaries and is asking members to pay utility bills in black market American dollars. It's also apparently releasing detainees for a cut rate price of $500 a person. Airstrikes and other measures that targeted the group's cash stockpiles and oil infrastructure are to blame for the shortage. A University of Rhode Island professor has developed a sensor that can detect explosives, ones that were used in the Paris bombings. The professor compares the sensor to a dog's nose, saying it sniffs the air for vapors emitted from explosives. The sensor is designed to continuously monitor an area without taking a break like bomb-sniffing dogs have to do. The professor plans to test the sensor at an FAA facility and on cargo containers at a port. All right, so tomorrow is the transition day, the day we start warming up on our temperatures, and it continues warming right into the weekend. I'll show you a breakdown of the weekend temperatures, and we'll take a look at that chance of rain, I'll show you where it's the best chance coming up. The temperature is at 41 degrees in Columbia at BMW of Columbia. And looking for the, to the west, you can see we have 43 degrees at FFO Home in Sedalia. Those clouds are going to be stubborn all night tonight and for the first part of the day tomorrow. 42 degrees at the lake right now. So here is the out the door forecast for Wednesday. Tomorrow we're starting close to 30 degrees, but the clouds will gradually break up in the afternoon to a partly cloudy sky. So it's looking pretty nice tomorrow. We'll also warm up a little more than we did today. We touch into the upper 40s to near 50 degrees tomorrow. So with temperatures near 50 tomorrow, that'll be the transition day. We start warming the wind shift around to the southeast. That south wind really starts to kick in on Thursday. And Thursday looks like a windy day, certainly a day you do not want to do any outdoor burning. We're looking at those winds gusting to 30 miles an hour Thursday. And even into Friday, it's going to be windy. Temperatures, though, warm up because of that south wind. 70 degrees Thursday in Sedalia, 64 at Columbia Thursday. And Jefferson City, look for 66 degrees. So we have the clouds with us now, but the weather pattern's fairly dry for the next several days. This area of moisture is going to miss us just to the north and to the east. So it looks like we are just going to have the clouds tonight and into tomorrow morning. You can see that on future track. This is tonight. Here come the uh, that little bit of precipitation. Notice it hits far northern Missouri, then scoots eastward. So we're going to be missed by that. And we'll start to see that clearing in that sunshine by tomorrow afternoon. So we have above average temperatures in the forecast, not only for tomorrow, but all the way into the weekend. It looks like we could have above average temperatures through March 1st 
This is the temperature forecast for the rest of February, where we are going to have some cool days mixed in, but overall, it looks like we're looking at temperatures above average. As far as the weekend, we do have a slight chance of some light rain. It's very uncertain on the forecast models, but we wanted to make you aware that there could be a little bit of light rain Saturday night into Sunday. The best chance is south of Interstate 70. And Sunday is the cooler day of the weekend. We touched near 60 Sunday, but overall, oh boy, nice weekend to get out. I've already heard so many people talking about taking hikes, going to the national parks, perhaps having a barbecue. This is the kind of spring fever weekend, isn't it, Joey? We hit yeah. 70 Friday. Look at that. It's not a record, but it's warm for this time of year. A lot of fun activity, but no invitations yet. Not yet. <laughs> All right, Sharon, <Jerry>, thanks. <laughs> Well, the race for the Republican presidential nomination is heating up tonight. Here are the harsh words Republican Senator Ted Cruz is saying about his rival, Donald Trump. And the woman accused of deliberately driving her car into a crowd at an Oklahoma University homecoming parade could face additional charges. We'll have details coming up. Taking a look at news around America tonight, Texas Senator Ted Cruz is throwing some punches at Donald Trump. The Republicans suggest Trump is not the kind of president children should look up to. He says the president should bring people together and defend values instead of attacking those who might question his record. The, way, the next Republican presidential primary is set for Saturday in South Carolina. Meanwhile, in the Democratic primary race, Hillary Clinton is focusing her campaign on, quote, breaking every barrier. She met with civil rights leaders in New York today to discuss a speech on combating systematic racism. She says the country still has work to do to ensure equal rights for all citizens. Clinton's appearance with the African-American leaders comes as the race for the nomination moves into states with significant black voting populations. A woman charged in an Oklahoma parade crash could face more charges. You'll recall the woman is accused of deliberately crashing into a crowd of people at Oklahoma State University's homecoming parade. Four people were killed and dozens more were hurt in the crash. Prosecutors now expect to file 12 new charges against the driver. It comes after officials identified more victims who were hurt in the crash. Suspect is currently charged with four counts of second degree murder and 46 counts of assault and battery. We'll have another check of your forecast with ABC 17's Drum Trek Chief Meteorologist Sharon Ray next. We have breaking news to tell you about on ABC 17 News at 5 tonight. We have learned another player is dismissed from the Mizzou basketball team. We'll bring you the latest on what led to Wes Clark's dismissal. That's coming up on ABC 17 News at 6. Well, we have a rather chilly evening as temperatures will drop through the 30s with a northwest breeze and a mostly cloudy sky. So grab the coat before heading out this evening. Yes, we do have a warming trend in the forecast, but it's still going to be a bit cool tomorrow. So you'll still need those jackets. A high of 50 Saturday, uh, Wednesday. I guess I'm thinking ahead. Uh, Wednesday at 50 in Columbia, 52 Jefferson City. Nice day tomorrow, but it may take a while to see the sun. Not until afternoon. Next seven days, the temperatures continue to climb. Friday is the warmer day of the week, upper 60s to near 70. Friday, Saturday at 65. Not a bad start to the weekend, huh? And there is a slight rain chance Saturday night into Sunday morning, but I think it's going to be a mainly dry weekend, and then we're cooler early next week. So all in all, some good weather ahead. And of course, I'll be back on ABC 17 News at 6 with more on this warming trend and how long it'll last. That weekend doesn't even look real. I know. Nice. All right, Sharon, thanks. We'll see you back here at 6.